Hey Pyros, Tim Reneke with Fireworks.show, and if you're looking to start scripting shows and want to learn the basics of Cobra Show Creator, the rundown starts right now. Okay, so what you can expect from this video is a quick walkthrough of a timed-only event script. And, and all that basically is is a script that once we're done, you could load into your remote and it would fire these fireworks automatically for you um, after you started the script. You wouldn't need to do anything else. So just so you've got kind of the premise of, of where we're going to dive into here, uh, you're going to see some other options as we go along. Don't worry if those don't make sense. Um, we'll cover those in deeper dive videos. Uh, at a later date. So, all right, so to get started, we're going to need to go to the file menu in the upper uh, left hand corner. Click on new show, or you can press control N on your keyboard. Uh, we're not going to have music today, and we're just going to do that timed only event script uh, that we talked about. So, click on that, and then you just need to name your show. So, backyard hero in this case, and we'll click submit. So, the basics of a timed event script is that you have some fireworks, right, that you want to shoot at certain times after a script starts. So to ignite those fireworks, we're gonna be creating cues or events uh, that will indicate what time we want each firework to go off. So we'll add our first cue uh, to our script by clicking on the plus button down here in the cue controls field. And that will add our first one to the script. And I'll quickly walk through uh, each of these columns with you so you've got kind of a general idea what each of these do. Okay, so the event time is simply the time relative to us starting the script uh, that we want to wait before shooting off the firework on this line. So in the case of this queue uh, being at zero, as soon as we start our script, uh, this line or this firework is going to fire. Now the uh, channel and the queue both pertain to the module that the firework is going to shoot from. Uh, the channel is the, uh, is the channel that you will set on your module and the queue is simply the queue number that you'll have that firework plugged into. Um, if this terminology doesn't make sense, I'll link up in the description below an 18M kind of uh, basics video that'll walk you through how to do that. Okay, so that first module will be zero then. And the uh, since this is our first firework on that module, this will be Q1. Okay, and then firework name, uh, pretty self-explanatory. This is simply a description um, or whatever is on your label of those 1.4 uh, cakes or artillery shells. You just put that in here. So I'm just going to say like 500 gram uh, red, white, and blue. And then uh, duration is just how long, in this case, this cake is going to last. So uh, if this cake uh, lasts 30 seconds, you're just simply going to key in 30. Okay, igniter pre-fire is simply how long that uh, safety match or that visco is going to take to burn to actually ignite the firework. Uh, this is particularly important in pyro musicals. Um, I'm not going to brush on it too much in this video. Uh, and then lift time is just uh, for single shot, like artillery shells, for example. After that um, shell is ignited and uh, lifted out of the tube, how long is it actually in the air before it bursts? Okay, so I do really quickly want to touch on a really cool feature in Cobra Show Creator called My Fireworks. Now, we've all got product lists of all the, the fireworks that we're going to have in our show, right? Well, you can actually store that information in Cobra Show Creator. Um, so you don't need to remember the durations or the lift times of shells later on when you come back to script again. Um, so to do that, you can right click on the firework name here, if it's not already in your inventory, and click on Open in My Fireworks. And then a dialog box is going to pop up if you're not already logged in or if you don't have an account. And you'll need to create a new user um, if you haven't done so already. Really quick and simple. Uh, I'm going to go ahead really briefly here and log in to my account. And then once you're logged in, it'll ask you uh, this 500 gram red, white, and blue uh, isn't present. Would you like to add it? And I'm going to click yes. Now, if I already have the duration entered, it'll bring that in um, along with the firework name. And then you can add a bunch of other information if you want. If there's a YouTube link and, you know, a category. So, like, this is a, a 500 gram multi-shot cake. Now, I'm, I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to go through this in any more detail. But really cool, uh, once you're done, you just hit submit. And then that will save uh, to your inventory on their servers. And you can reference it whenever you need to. Sometimes it just takes a few seconds to save. So, now I'll go into Firework Share here and just simply show you if I go into uh, my fireworks and I say show all 
here is a list of all the uh, cakes that we typically buy from a vendor in our area. And then if I simply search out 500 gram uh, red, for example, here is that cake. And you can really quickly insert that um, into your show. Okay, so we ran through that rather quickly, but like a lot of these other topics, we'll cover that in full detail in another deep dive video. Um, but the reason why I did wanna show you that here is I wanted to illustrate just how flexible Cobra Show Creator can be. You can do a lot of these uh, next steps in, in multiple different ways, whatever is more efficient for you. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another red, white, blue uh, to our timeline here and then shoot that from another module. So we're gonna shoot both of these at the same time um, from you know theoretically two different positions. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the plus button down here, add another uh, queue or event to our script. And then over here, you'll see on the left-hand side, there's kind of this white space here. Simply click on that and that'll dark gray this line out. Now that's telling Cobra Show Creator, this is where I want to insert uh, this, this product, this firework essentially. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Click insert over here and, uh, oops, I might need to do it again. And then you'll see the firework name and the duration come in automatically for us. And then we'd simply need to say, well, we've, we need another module, right? To shoot it from another position. This module might be on channel one. And since it's a new module, that will be on Q1 as well. So now these are both at a, uh, event timer zero. So as soon as we start these script on these two different positions, uh, these fireworks are gonna go off. Now we can do that in another way. So I'll show you how to delete this. Uh, there's a number of ways you can do this as well. You can click on this line, highlight it again, and click on this minus button down here. It'll say, do you wanna delete the selected queue line? Or you can right click and select delete queue as well. Same thing there. Now, uh, again, we wanna get back to the same result. So we could just as easily right click uh, assuming that this firework name and all this information, we want it to be the same. So you can right click, go to duplicate event, and then we just need to change the channel to one. So that works out well when the firework is exactly the same. Okay, so we'll go through a few other examples just to kind of reinforce these points again. Um, so, all right, these uh, 500 grams are going off. We've got those going for 30 seconds. They're ending, and now what are we gonna do? So uh, let's search out a 200 gram cake um, that I've got in my inventory. Maybe we wanna shoot this crazy like a fox. We've got that available. So let's add another cue to our timeline here. And then just like we did for that red, white, blue, we'll click over here on the left, highlighting that line and then we'll go insert on this crazy like a fox. So that'll insert that. We want this to fire after these uh, red, white, blues finish. So we'll simply double click in this case on the event time. That'll allow us to change uh, when this one's gonna go off. And Cobra uh, Show Creator has a nice feature where um, if you have the durations plugged in, we can simply say after the previous event's duration, start uh, this firework. So hit save and it'll do the math for you. So at 30 seconds after our script starts, uh, this firework will now go off. Uh, we'll need to set that to channel zero, so our first module and then Q2, since one is already occupied. And then we wanna duplicate that uh, just like we did the other one. So we'll right click on this, go to duplicate event, and we want that to be um, symmetrical. So we'll just shoot this from our other channel or our other module rather. So one and two for this one. All right. Okay, and we'll do one more set just to round this off. Again, we'll go back to this queue controls, click on this plus button to add a new uh, event or queue to our script. And then we'll use, uh, let's say these bump bears, the 16 shot at 18 seconds. We'll click insert, that'll drop that in. Uh, again, you can see there's kind of a pattern here. We're gonna be on channel zero uh, and now Q3 for this bump bear. And let's say for instance, we want to get specific with this event time. Um, we wanted this at exactly uh, 37 seconds. So you can specify and get very specific if you want. We'll hit save. And then once again, right click and we'll duplicate this on our other module on one. So this is just a foundation. You could continue on. You could amp up into you know, a full-fledged finale if you wanted to. Um, but that's where we're going to stop for this video in terms of the scripting. Now I'll show you some other cool, cool features real quick before we um, complete this. 
Uh, if we go into the options menu here, you have the ability to, in settings, add some custom event columns. And those are really handy uh, when it comes to labels. So if we head out to this event tabs really quick, and then um, this custom event block, or custom event columns block rather. I'm gonna add a new column here and check this off. I've already got it named position. Uh, you can name these whatever you want and then just specify their width. That's how wide these will be over here. And then I'll hit save. That'll add a position column over here. And now, just for clarity, I could say, well, module zero may be on our left position. Module one may be on our right position. And I'll just really quickly go down. Now, if we had done this in the beginning, obviously these would have copied over, it would have been a lot easier. Um, but just for the sake of showing you in this example. And where these custom columns can be beneficial is uh, if you're using like Avery labeling, for example. So if you go to print cues down here and uh, we go to like type one, for example, when these actually display, you'll see we've got position left on all the ones that are on our left position or on channel zero. And we've got position right uh, for those that'll be on channel one uh, or our uh, right position. So um, some really cool stuff if you're using uh, Avery labels and on your reports, just to, again, to make things a little bit more clear. Okay, so we're only one step away from being able to export the script. First, we do need to set up our script attributes, uh, which will indicate what firmware version we're running. Um, if you're unaware of what firmware you're on, you can simply boot up your 18R2 and it'll be the first number that appears in the digital display. Now, no matter what firmware version you're running, there are three attributes that you need uh, to enter in, and I'm gonna cover those today. So uh, the trigger channel, the trigger button, and the return channel. So the trigger channel is simply the channel that your remote needs to be on um, to start the show, to start the script. So in this case, I'm just gonna enter channel zero. And then the trigger button is simply what button you're gonna press to start the show. So I'll click on this. It'll bring up a nice representation of your 18R2 and you can pick on any one of these white buttons to use. I'm just gonna use one. All right, and return channel is just the return channel, the channel that the remote will return to when this script is done executing. So I'll just use zero. Okay, so now we are ready to export our script. Simply go down to the uh, create 18R2 script file button click on that. Um, if everything looks good, it'll tell you that the script was successfully created. Um, at this point, you can go ahead and plug in uh, your USB thumb drive. I'm going to export to that by going to export script, uh, selecting that thumb drive from my list here. Oops, I'll pull this into the view here. Uh, selecting that drive from the list and then clicking on save. All right, so we'll load this into our remote and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so we've got the script loaded on our thumb drive. We'll just go ahead and insert that into our 18R2 and turn it on. It'll take just about a few moments and then you should see a quick blip and all of these uh, cue lights should turn green indicating in, uh, that our script has been loaded properly. As we'd expect on channel zero, as you see here, there's uh, the three cues that we've scripted and if we channel up to channel one, We've got those three cues as well. Uh, so we'll go ahead and dry fire this just using the remote. We don't have any modules here, but to do that, remember, we'd need to be back on that um, trigger channel, which we indicated as zero. We'll arm up our remote and then push one. And since uh, those 500 gram red, white, and blues are firing for 30 seconds, you'll get the indicator down here that the next cue will fire in 30 seconds as we would expect. So that wraps up the basics of scripting in Cobra Show Creator. If you like this content, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. And let us know in the comments below other content that you'd like to see in the near future. Thanks for watching.